friends, and welcome to Live from the City Opera House. It's story time. I'm your host, Ben Whiting, and every week on this show, we're going to have a great story read by a special guest and then have a fun activity you can participate in right from home. That activity will always teach us something about science, technology, engineering, or mathematics, and will be a lot of fun. Now, I'm going to tell you the supplies you need for today's activity, but if you would like to look up supplies for future activities on future episodes, visit us online or on social media, and you can download an activity sheet with all the supplies you'll need for every episode. Now, before we get to the supplies, we all know it's important that when you have a friend who helps you out, you need to thank them. And we want to thank some friends who've made this show possible. Traverse City Area Public School System, Newton's Road, Tattle, the Traverse City Opera House, and of course, our season underwriting sponsor, Bell Tire. Thank you so much from the bottom of our heart for your contribution and your support. Now, on to today's book. Today's book is 21 Elephants and Still Standing. It's a fabulous story about one of my personal heroes, P.T. Barnum the world's greatest showman, and how he used 21 elephants to show the strength of the Brooklyn Bridge. Now, speaking of bridges, that leads us to today's activity, because we are going to be making our own bridges right at home with some things we can find around the house. Supplies you might need for today's activity include drinking straws, paper clips, newspaper, tape, and yarn or string. But we'll get to that a little bit later on. And now it's time for our special guest, Mr. Casey Cowell. He's a principal at Boomerang Catapult and co-founder of US Robotics, a company that designs and creates modems. Now modems are devices that connect your home computers to the internet. So if you've ever talked to one of your friends at a computer on the internet, Mr. Casey Cowell has helped you with that. You can think of the modem kind of as a bridge between you and your friends. So now, without further ado, it's time for Mr. Cowell to read today's story. Mr. Cowell, take it away. Hello, my name is Casey Cowell. I've been connected to the Traverse City area for a long time, my entire life. And I also love to read, which is why it's really a joy for me to be here today to talk with you and to to read with you and talk about some of the great things about reading. Um, To... To really do interesting things in your life, you really have to put education as number one. And to really focus on the basics of a good education, a great education, you have to develop the skills to be a lifelong learner. And uh, at the top of the list, uh, to be a lifelong learner, you have to be a, a skillful and an enthusiastic reader. There's no question about it, and that's been true my entire life. I'm fortunate that my parents were focused on developing reading skills and enjoying reading when I was little, and it stayed with me forever, and it's totally changed my life. Uh, I grew up in the city of Detroit, went to college in Chicago at the University of Chicago, and that's another experience that totally changed my life. It really uh, stepped up the pace for me. I met brilliant people uh, all the time, and I was introduced to new ideas vastly different than anything that I had encountered Uh, as I was growing up. And uh, it it had a huge impact for me and it opened up the opportunity in life for me uh, far beyond anything that I I ever expected. And a key ingredient that was essential for me to be able to to learn and to thrive in that environment and that stayed with me has to be be a skillful and an enthusiastic reader. you know, Chicago gave me the skills necessary to be a lifelong lear- learner, and it let me be super active in life forever, in spite of the fact that I was constantly meeting new challenges. I learned tools to live my life uh, constantly facing uh, new adventures and new challenges, and reading was right at the, the, es- the center of that. It enabled me to succeed. Um, here's something to think about. If I have an apple, and I give you the apple, then you have an apple, and I don't have an apple. But if I have an idea, and I give you the idea, you then have the idea, and I still have the idea. We both have the idea. And in a similar fashion, we can share it with many, many, many other people. And this is how uh, we think, 
And this is how um, we get our point across. And this is how we share information. And this is how we learn. So um, reading, reading is basically, it's free to do. Uh, and and it frees the mind to think and to be inspired. Um, so I mean, entertain, being entertained and being inspired is for free through reading. So I hope that you get enthusiastic and stay enthusiastic about that and always dig in. You can learn from the best thinkers of our entire history through reading, and you can do it for your entire life. Uh, enough about that. Let's get on with our story, 21 Elephants and Still Standing. This is a fun, true story, and I th think it may inspire you to be creative in your thinking and to see how you may inspire others. If I could get the book open. <laughs> 21 Elephants and Still Standing. For 14 years, they'd watched it rise. The critics, school teachers, bankers, cabinet makers. Pointing and gawking, ooing and eyeing, cheering as the great pillars grew. Then came, wo came woven steel cables, strung graceful and strong, like stairways straight to the stars. Taller and stronger, bigger and broader, a bridge of infinite dreams, New York and Brooklyn dwarfed by its arches, knew the future had entered their sights. Amazing, worth the waiting, it was simply breathtaking. It was known as the eighth wonder of the world. Some wondered how long would it stand? Hmm. When the day finally came and the Brooklyn Bridge opened, the landmark was given its due. Flags waved, bands played, kids hurrayed, before bigwigs and top hats galore. At night, there were fireworks, skyrockets of light rained for an hour from the top of the towers to the roar of the crowds down below. Packed on sailboats and steamers amidst bright colored streamers, people partied until the sun rose. Big party time. Everyone's excited. For the two sister cities, there was special excitement. They were linked by a magnificent bond. Now over the river, not on its swift current, they could visit, do business, see sights. Sweethearts could take moonlight strolls. The bridge was exquisite, a true work of art, the greatest feat of its day, and that's true globally, greater than anything ever built. But so long and so lofty, its cable so new, some had to ask, is it safe? Might it fall down? To these doubt-ridden few friends sang the thing's virtues, the arches, the truss work, the view. Still, some could not be persuaded. Some bridges have fallen. Who wants to bargain? This bridge won't dance in the wind. Think it's going to fall? One man who heard this, Phineas T. Barnum, saw in the doubt an opportunity. For Phineas T. Barnum always looked on the bright side. Phineas T. Barnum was larger than life. The world famous showman, showman's most awesome creation was the greatest show on earth, the circus. Yet Barnum's ideas weren't contained by a tent. I will stage an event that will calm every fear, erase every worry about that remarkable bridge. My display will amuse, inform, and astound, or else my name isn't Barnum. And he was like that. He put on promotions and he inspired people. So one evening in May 1884, the circus headed for Brooklyn. It traveled by water except for old Barnum's most massive, most gallant attractions. What do you think they were? Up Broadway they sauntered, trainers and charges, enchanting more than a few. Onlookers went wild and filed behind, beguiled by the pachyderm procession. Those are elephants, pachyderms. For the public prize elephants, especially Jumbo, pride of the circus's rings, with his height of 12 feet, the good-natured beast was America's oversized darling. On the group marched past City Hall, past mothers, fathers, and children. Then the bridge straight ahead, the spectacle mounting, with the giant's first steps on the roadway of the bridge. One after another, the elephants pressed onward, silently trusting the wood planks and steel. Five, six, then seven were crossing. 
10, 11, and still there were more. Some onlookers oogled, some giggled with glee, some questioned companions or strangers. How many pounds can the wondrous bridge hold? How many elephants are too great a load? Swaying and rumbling, still they were coming, the parade of elephant bulk. 21 is a lot of elephants, but it's a spectacular bridge. At the end of the line came Jumbo himself for 21 elephants in all. The seven-ton star seemed to waggle his ears in reply to admirers' cheers. Hmm. And though the bridge stretched a mile, in just a short while and much to the people's delight, the elephants had crossed with the bridge still aloft. Barnum pronounced the thing sound. In the following days, some doubters strolled the greatest bridge on earth. What else did they do once they'd savored the view? Why, they went to the big top circus, of course. Barnum got his, got his wish. What a fun story. The, um, the thing that, that I get out of that and something for you to think about is you know when the Brooklyn Bridge was built in New York City, that's more than 100 years ago, and uh, it was known as the eighth wonder of the world because its design, construction, and technology were so incredible. And P.T. Barnum, who was famous for his circus, which I went to as a little boy, it was very common when I was little. You always went to the circus every year when it came through town. You don't hear about it quite so much anymore. But many people were fearful that the bridge wouldn't stand and Barnum decided that he could end those fears dramatically by proving the strength of the bridge by marching his 21 elephants across it. And it worked. My bet is that Barnum was a reader because readers are leaders. Leaders have to inspire people and help them to overcome their fears as Mr. Barnum did. So I hope through reading, you can learn the stories of how many amazing creative people changed the world by leading others to a more confident way of thinking. This may inspire you to be a more creative thinker. I hope so. Thank you for having me today. But we're not done yet because now it's time to take what we read and put it into action. And to do that, we have a special guest, Mr. Nathan Brush, who's a science and technology teacher at West Middle School. He's here today with his family to walk us through today's activity. Take it away, Mr. Brush. For our bridge support, we just got some scrap wood right here that we're gonna build our bridges on. And so if uh, Genevieve and Grayson, if you would measure the distance, we're gonna measure across nine inches to span the bridge. So if you get that measured out for us. Go ahead and just move that like that. And we're gonna check front and back to make sure that it is nine inches and we're gonna adjust a little bit. All right, and the materials that we're gonna use today are uh, good old fashioned spaghetti and just some computer paper right here. And so while Genevieve, while Grayson is finishing up spanning there, I want you to try and just put that piece of paper across. And we're just gonna test the materials we're working with. And Grayson, take one spaghetti noodle. Okay, go ahead and spread that across there. Get one spaghetti noodle. And uh, what I want you guys to do now is just try to get one penny on there. So go ahead and, and what's going on there? Go ahead and just put it across there. Last, go, oh, come on, put the paper across there. You got the penny on there yet? Well, that's not, that's not really working out all right for us, right? So um, what we're gonna do is we're going to um, use a system here between spaghetti noodles and paper. So they each have seven noodles and uh, chose seven just because that divides into 21 and we're just a nice little number to use for uh, 21 elephants book that we read today. And so they're gonna get seven noodles to work with and one piece of paper. And what they're gonna do now is they're gonna design a bridge to try to hold those 21 pennies to represent the 21 elephants that cross the Brooklyn Bridge. So go, go ahead guys, take it away and see what you can put together to build your bridge. Now we're thinking about having spaghetti tonight after we've talked about using spaghetti noodles. I would not recommend using food that you use for science for your food later today. 
but it is always okay to make your favorite teacher, especially your favorite STEM teacher, a nice STEM cake by working on measuring the ingredients out. Nice job. So we have one successful iteration of this. And what engineers like to do is they like to um, make the strongest structures with the least amount of materials. It uh, is good uses of our resources and helps protect our environment, but also it saves them money and so that people can build bridges with less money if they have to use less materials. So buddy, what I want you to do now is redesign that bridge using less materials. So maybe take away some noodles or maybe do something different with the paper. So good. Same, nice work Genevieve. Go ahead and let's try something different now. So we're gonna try it with less noodles or maybe not the paper or maybe not the noodles. Let's see what we can come up with. And remember we can fold the paper and shape it in a way that might might work for us. So how many noodles are you using now? Three. Three, okay. And you're just gonna try folded paper. Do you wanna try that out first before we add noodles? And just try the pennies? Yes. All right, let's try it out with just without the noodles. So that, that held a lot better than the first sheet, just the paper unfolded. Maybe try folding it again in a different way or adding more folds. So you have three noodles for yours? Yes. And held 21 pennies. It's pretty impressive. Can you do it with two? <laughs> we will find out. All right. Now the cool thing is we can do this with, um, we're using 21 pennies today to represent the elephants. But um, we were talking about this yesterday, and when we go home, Grayson wants to try 21 matchbox cars and try to build a bridge that holds that. Um, Genevieve here wants to try with 21 Lego guys. I don't think we have 21 Lego guys, but we can maybe some other little figures, right? Uh, you can even try to build a bridge to hold just one big stuffed animal, maybe. You can also see with Grayson here with the, with the pieces working together that it's almost like teamwork using different kind of materials to work together to get a, a common goal taken care of. Now why don't you try it with just paper, see what happens. And Evie, why don't you try just noodles this time? How could you do? How could you fold that? I see you looking over Evie, and that's good because um, what engineers do all the time is they look at other people's work and see how they're doing things, and then they use that and improve on it. That's what we do as, as STEM people is we take what's already there and make it better and improve on it. So you see Evie, she held, I think, about seven pennies with this, just this one fold. So if one fold holds 20 or seven pennies, do you think maybe an extra fold might make it even that much stronger? Can I give a suggestion? Yeah. So why don't we maybe take it and just fold it again? And I'm not sure if elementary school teachers still say this way. We, when I was a kid, we called it hot dog style. So we fold it hot dog style. So maybe see what that does. Right now, when we have the pennies on the blocks, it's not really holding the weight of the penny the blocks. Is. We want to put the weight in the middle there, okay? Oh, 
do that? Wait, I wonder if the paintings we're doing, could the paintings maybe be helping hold the paper on the wood? Let's try now to slowly slide them in the middle, see what happens. How'd that work for you? Pretty bad. Uh-oh. Well, you, um, you remember, you can also take it just for a second here. It says kind of loose. We can also crease it. We're going to take our fingernail. We can crease that. And that makes it like a little bit more flat for you. Maybe try that. Did you get all 21 on there with one fold and two noodles? Most impressive. What do you think you can do now? What's your next idea? Let's try one more idea. Hmm. How long with, with just with noodles? Just try with just noodles, all right. And this will be our last iteration to see how, how these different techniques work. Now remember guys, at home when you're doing this, it doesn't really matter what you use, but make sure whatever you're using, your parent gives you okay for. So, um, but then just have fun with it. And again, see, you know, we're using 21 pennies right now, but the other idea that we came up with last night as we're talking about this is maybe trying 40 pennies, 50 pennies, or just see how many pennies we can get this material to hold. It's looking good. I like how you're spreading the weight out a little bit across the noodles and letting each of them work together and help each other out. That noodle seemed to be kind of silent. Do you think, what could you do? Success. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for helping us out today. And uh, you guys at home, again, have fun with this. Don't limit yourselves to just what we used today for the demonstration. Look around the house. Have fun with it. Again, with what you used to build the bridge and what you used to hold it. Uh, we also, we brought along with us, and I forgot to bring them, but we have, uh, we're going to bring their stuffed animals here. We have Bear Bear. And we have Posey, these two little stuffed animals, and we're going to build a bridge for them um, at home when we get home and try to get on our own. Thank you very much, and have a good day. Mr. Brush, thank you so much, and thanks to your family for walking us through today's activity. We'd also like to thank Mr. Cower for being our special reader today, as well as our sponsors. But of most of all, we want to thank you. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in. This show would not be possible if you didn't watch. But... We're not done yet because we want to see how you did with today's activity. So take a picture of your bridge and email it to info at tcaps.net. That's info at tcaps.net. Also have your name, age, a description of your bridge. Make sure you send this with your parents' permission and you'll be entered to win a free copy of today's book signed by our special guest and yours truly. If you enjoyed today's episode, please join us every Wednesday at 9 a.m. live. Or if you want to see any of our previous episodes, you can go to tcaps247.com and see all of our old episodes on demand. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And until next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep learning. Take care.